Space Shipbreaker is a puzzle sandbox in which your only job is to strip down ships for parts and try not to get set on fire. Warning. Fire damage. Frozen. Reduce wear on your suit heat element by maintaining a healthy body temperature. Or electrocuted. Electrical damage. In the process. Thank goodness clones are a thing in this universe because we are going through a few. Now this game is still in early access with promises of future updates and features, but what's here is already pretty solid. You play as an employee of the Lynx Corporation, a shady company not too concerned with the lives of their employees, but are all about that money. Especially the billion credits you owe them. So yeah, you're gonna be here a while. The opening tutorial takes you through the basics of movement, which in Zero G is more just about making sure that while you float around, you don't slam into something. Helmet damage detected. You're given a laser cutter, which you'll use to carve through metal and separate the ships into more manageable pieces. There's also your grapple, which lets you create tethers and grab onto useful items or scrap to organize them into the correct collection ports. Either the processor, the furnace, or the barge. Thankfully, your HUD displays all this information for you, so you don't have to remember where everything goes off the top of your head. With each new ship you take on, you get a work order, a list of materials and parts you need to collect by the end of the shift. Smaller ships naturally have smaller work orders, and the bigger you go, the longer that list gets, and the more delicate you have to be to make sure you keep the pieces it asks for intact. Cut the wrong pipe or forget to depressurize a room, and you'll find yourself losing a lot of potential salvage credits. Salvage destroyed. Please cleaning. To an onlooker, Hard Space Shipbreaker may seem boring. Though there are upgrades you can apply as you progress to speed up movement and juice up your tools, it is a lot of slow, possibly nausea-inducing floating. But when you're in the driver's seat, trying to keep track of what needs doing, what has to be cut away and what needs to be kept on, making sure pieces aren't floating off into space, Valuable object protest. Credits awarded. all the while trying to maintain your fuel and oxygen levels, it's a uniquely intense experience. I did come across a few bugs here and there, like things spontaneously catching fire, parts not separating properly, and at one point when trying to break into a pressurized ship, the game crashed. Which at first I thought was maybe a funny way to punish me for being a chaos machine, but sadly no. As I said though, this is early access and little hiccups are to be expected and hopefully ironed out come the full release. Aside from the main campaign, there's also a free play mode where you can jump in and work on any of the five available ships with no time constraints and limitless tethers, oxygen and fuel. While I definitely preferred having a very set beginning and end to these sessions, the free play was still a lot of fun and really useful training for the main campaign. Air pressure level decreasing. I've played enough building games to know that I'm much better at destroying things than I am at building them. However, blowing things up does have a limit to its entertainment, something Shipbreaker has accounted for by making each ship a puzzle to be solved rather than just carelessly destroyed. Despite still being in its early days, Hard Space Shipbreaker is already proving itself to be quite a fun test of both patience and precision. I'm hesitant to give it a solid score just yet, but I'm really excited to see where the game developers take it from here. So definitely jump on and give it a crack. If you think you can handle the heat, that is. <laughs>